All right, so in your online assignment today, we're going to be talking about some final helpful tips to help you as you're finishing up working on your draft and, and doing a, a final uh, revision of your rewriting history essay. So I'm going to go over the things that you're going to be graded on, which is audience, narrative voice, required topics, the amount of quotes, MLA format, the vivid descriptions and cause of vocabulary, grammar, and formatting. So we're going to go over all of these just briefly to make sure you understand what's being asked of you for each one. Um, understand that failure to follow the objectives that are set out will re uh, result in you losing points. How many points you lose depends on how, uh, how far from the mark you are from, uh, from doing what I've asked. So with audience, assume your audience hasn't seen the movie or read the book or is just not familiar with the text. Um, why do I ask you to do that? Because it's possible that I haven't seen it and I need to be able to understand it even if I haven't seen it. So you've got to give us enough information that we get what you're talking about um, even if we are not familiar. We, when I say we, I mean the audience. Um, that we still understand, that we get the significance of the movie and the history behind it. So when I say strong narrative voice, there's a couple of things that that means. So one is stay on topic, meaning um, don't include a bunch of information that doesn't really matter or doesn't add anything. Also avoid redundancies. So redundancies are when you already said something but you keep saying it over and over again uh, in a paper that gets really annoying and it feels like you're BSing because you're trying to reach that minimum page length but you don't want to have to go do more research. So make sure once you say something and it's clear that you move on and say something else. And then finally sound knowledgeable. So uh, and this kind of goes along with college level vocabulary but it needs to sound like you've seen this movie recently and know about the movie, and it needs to sound like you've done your research um, and, and that you really know the historical accuracies and inaccuracies, and you, that needs to come through in your writing. So your writing should be very specific. Um, vague writing, like saying things like the movie is about people doing stuff um, obviously makes it sound like you have no idea what you're talking about and you're just BSing us. So you want to sound like you know exactly what you're talking about, you've thought this through, and your paper has ethos. So remember there's three required topics for you to discuss within your paper. And if you fail to do one of these, you will lose points. So the first one is how did the movie make you feel about the historical event or person? What did you feel when you discovered its inaccuracies? So some people don't really care and some people feel like they have been uh, deceived. So this is really just your opinion. Um, I'm not looking for a specific answer here. I want, I want an honest answer. Why do you think the movie makers changed and or left certain facts out? Was it for the sake of time or a more interesting story? or making a human into a hero or a villain. And so again, you want to use your critical thinking skills as you think about this. Now you might find out, you might get an interview with a director um, of your movie where he explains himself, and that's extremely helpful. But if you don't find that, then you can just, you know, use your critical thinking skills and, and think about why might they have changed certain things. And then finally, Evaluate the facts versus fiction of the movie. So this is the bulk of your paper. Taking this into account, does the movie do more harm than good or vice versa? Does it fall into the category of a balanced and appropriate representation or a problematic untruthful one? And again, this is partially your opinion, but it also needs to be based logically on your analysis. So if something has a lot of facts but also a lot of fiction, then you really have to decide based on what they change, do those things matter? 
And so that's a little more open. But if you have a movie with very few historical facts and lots of fiction, and you tell me that it's still a good historical representation, then I'm going to probably have to take off points on your paper because you have not used good critical thinking skills in evaluating that. So, so again, remember, this is partially opinion, but, but you've got to have put some thought into this. Don't just default to, oh, I didn't care about what was changed, so it's fine. Um, you really want to think about this and about do the things that they changed matter or are they such small details that they don't really uh, present that historically inaccurate of a picture. And so again, th think about that carefully. Now, with number one and number two, you've got some choices you can um, about where you can put this in the paper. The first one you could put early on or you could put after you've done your analysis of facts versus fiction. Um, the second one, you can either respond to this as you're talking about the things that are changed. So you could say, here's something that was changed, here's why it was probably changed. Or you can list all the changes and then in a paragraph after that say, here's why I think all of these things were changed. So you've got a couple of different ways you can organize it. I think the last one is probably best left to the conclusion because that's kind of the whole point of your paper is showing us facts versus fiction and then deciding is it still a good historical representation or not. And that's, that's going to be best put into your conclusion paragraph. So for the required amount of in-text citations, and remember in-text citations means quotes, summaries, and paraphrases. So remember you have to have at least three sources and the text itself counts. So your movie or TV show, that counts as one. So you only have to have two other ones. And these other two can be movie reviews or historical articles. Um, either one might talk about uh, the facts versus fiction of your movie and so you can have as many as you want as long as you have two other ones and it can be a mix of movie, movie reviews and historical articles or it can be all of one or all of another as long as you're getting the information that you need to answer those three questions that we just talked about on the previous slide. For your sources, no Wikipedia, no blogs. Now why is that? Because you want to make sure that you're getting information that's accurate and not just what someone made up and slapped onto a website. Now again with Wikipedia, I like Wikipedia a lot and the reason I tell you not to use it is because the stance that almost every college in America has on Wikipedia is that it should not be used in academic papers as a source. So that's why I want to get you out of the habit of using it. However, you can go to the Wikipedia page for your movie and scroll down to the bottom where it lists its sources and usually they have web links to where they got the information. All of those are free game as long as they're not blogs. So you can use any of those other uh, sources that are listed on Wikipedia. So for each of your three sources you must have a quote uh, or a summary or a paraphrase. Um, at least one per source. Again, so that's three total. You have to have at least three total uh, in-text citations in your paper, one from each source. Obviously, if you use four sources, then you're going to have to have at least four in-text citations. So use at least one from each source. And you've got to have at least one quote in there. So don't rely completely on summary. Um, I, I need to see that you know how to quote as well. Please only use relevant quotes, so don't pick random things out. You're like, oh, I need a quote, let me grab a random quote from my movie or from my article and just slap it into my paper. No, it needs to be a quote that you can use, that you can integrate and talk about in your paper uh, and help that will help you answer the things that you have to talk about in this paper. So. Make sure you're using correct MLA format, and this is review. We've already gone over this, but I'm going to go over it briefly one more time. So don't forget that quote sandwich. Give the source's name and the credentials if you're using uh, articles 
So again, we've got our introduction here that names who the author is that we're getting this information from and what uh, publication they work for. And then we've got the quote itself. This is an online source, so we don't need page numbers. And then we've got a discussion of why are we using this quote? Well, this quote helps us to show that this is a good historical movie, that the few things that are changed don't really matter. Same thing when you are quoting your text itself. Don't forget that you need an introduction, that in your introduction, um, you need to tell us what the character's name is, who's actually saying this quote, and then again, go back and tell us um, why are you using that quote. And in this example, it's because the quote really represents um, something that is an accurate truth within the movie. It's a quote that we're not sure that the actual character or, you know, the, the real person that the character is based on literally said this, but we know that this is something he believed. And so that's how we're linking that into the rest of our paper. That's what we have to say about our quote. Summaries and paraphrases. Again, make sure it's mostly in your own words. I would say at least 90%. And the easy trick to that is take some time away from your source. So read it, take some time away, come back, write your summary or paraphrase without looking back at your article because that's what's gonna keep you from plagiarizing. Don't do the copy and paste method where you copy and paste a couple of sentences and then go in and try and change a few words to, to synonyms. That's plagiarism. Don't do it. You must approach this like it's an essay question on an exam. And so you don't have your notes or your book in front of you. You've got to use what's in your brain, what you know about your source, and put it into your own words. But, uh, but still remember to give credit to the source. So even though it's in your own words, it didn't originally come from your own brain. So don't forget to cite the author and if there's a page number, the page number where you got that information from. And remember, there's two ways to do this. You can introduce the author in your introduction or you can just give the information that you have to give and then put the author's last name in parentheses. What do you do if there is no author? You use the first couple of words of the title of the article as if it were the author. Um, and so that's gonna be, when you make your work cited entry, just look at whatever comes first. And if it's, you know, it should be, if there's no author, it should be the title of an article. Take a couple of the, of the first words from that title, put that in parentheses, or use the whole title to introduce the information. Don't forget to include a work cited. Don't forget that your work cited should look approximately like this, organized in alphabetical order, that any lines after the first one need to be tabbed over, that dates need to be in this format, day, abbreviated month, year. Um, so just double check yourself and make sure that, um, that your work cited looks like this one. So vivid descriptions and college level vocabulary. Um, just to explain in more detail what I mean by that, there's certain things that are accepted in high school level writing um, that are not acceptable in college. So to me, I always think about the difference between high school and college when it comes to writing is that high school writing lets you be vague. So you can say things like, this movie did a good job of doing what it was trying to do. It was a great movie, even if others don't think so. Well, if I got a sentence like this in a paper, my comments immediately in the margin are gonna be, what was it trying to do? Who's saying it didn't do it? So being specific rather than vague is one of the things that really sets college level vocabulary, or sorry, college level writing apart from high school writing. And so let's look at a college level version of this high school example of writing. The Patriot was meant to show how American families struggled to stay together and survived during the Revolutionary War, not to be an accurate depiction of the war itself. Though some argue its historical merits, it accomplishes its main goal, 
to show how a pacifist American father, after watching his sons die at the hands of British soldiers, could take up arms and fight in a war he didn't believe in. So notice the difference here. We're explaining what was the movie trying to do. We're explaining some people uh, don't think it was historically accurate, but why do we think it was? And so this is the, the clear difference between high school level and college level. And obviously you want to go more towards the college level. You want to constantly be giving examples when you make a claim and be extremely specific in your writing. And, and how do you do this? How do you get better at this? By reading. So if you're not reading the articles that I'm assigning, you're not gonna improve your vocabulary. You're not gonna improve your, uh, your understanding of sen sentence structure and how to write more complex sentences. So again, I don't give you these readings to punish you. <laughs> I do it because the only way that you will ever become a better writer is by reading good writing. So if you're not doing that, you will always be a high school level writer. Grammar and mechanics, I'm gonna talk about briefly just two of the main uh, mistakes that I see lots of students make. One is run-ons or you know often called comma splices. Malcolm X was a monumental adaptation of a historical icon. I don't care what the critics say about how it inaccurately portrays his involvement in the nation of Islam. So there's an obvious problem here, grammatically. This is two sentences put together with a comma. That's not what commas do. Commas don't link two sentences together. What kind of punctuation does link two sentences together? A semicolon. So if we put a semicolon here, um, this would be a correct sentence because we're showing here's two separate sentences they could stand on their own um, but they're linked you're showing the link between them you could also put a period here and that would be acceptable as well now I just mentioned you could put a, a semicolon here and that would be correct let's look at what semicolons don't do the film version of Malcolm X changed several key details such as his father's death and his maturing political beliefs this is an incorrect use of a semicolon. This is using it like a comma. A comma is a comma, a semicolon is a semicolon. They are not interchangeable. Um, they do their own things. So a semicolon would work here because this is two separate sentences that are linked together. They're about the same thing. And that's what you use semicolons to do. This, however, these two sentences um, cannot both stand on their own. So what I mean by stand on their own is up here, Malcolm X was a monumental adaptation of a historical icon. Well, that's got a subject and a verb and, and a, an object that it's talking about. And then so does this next sentence. I don't care what the critics say about how it inaccurately portrays his involvement in the nation of Islam. That's another complete sentence. These are two complete sentences, but we could put a semicolon here to show these are two complete sentences, but we wanna show the link between them. However, oops, down here, the film version of Malcolm X changed several key details. Well, that's a complete sentence, but is this one? Such as his father's death and his maturing political beliefs. No, because that doesn't have a, a subject for the beginning of the sentence. So that is not a complete sentence, and that's how we know this semicolon is incorrect, because we don't have two complete sentences that could stand on their own. In order for the semicolon to be correct, you should be able to substitute it with a period and have it still be correct. So this is not correct. What we need here instead is a comma. This is the beginning part of the sentence. This is the ending part of the sentence. We need a comma here, not a semicolon. So make sure you don't have to use semicolons. They're, they're a good college level punctuation to, to know how to use, but if you're confused by them, it's better to just use periods uh, and not worry about semicolons rather than use them incorrectly. Formatting guidelines. So remember, you've got to have that heading that's got your name, the class, the date, um, my name, 
And so look at the sample paper for that. Look at the heading that I put on your assignment sheet. Whole thing needs to be in Times New Roman 12 point font, double spaced, one inch margins, header or footer with your last name and the page number, um, has a title and should not be my rewriting history essay or should not be the title of your movie. So if your movie is Che, like I have my example over here, the title of, of your paper should not be Che. It needs to be more specific than that. So it doesn't have to be great, but it needs to be more than just the name of your text or the name of this assignment. Three to five pages, and I talked about this in class, but I wanna say it again. I do this because some people have few accuracies and inaccuracies to talk about. Some people have a lot to talk about. It depends on the text that you pick. But if you do a movie, and uh, I know that there's a lot more that you could say, but you stop writing at three pages, and it's obvious that you did it because you didn't feel like writing anymore, rather than because you'd completed saying all the things you, you could say about the movie, then again, that's going to reflect your grade. So three pages is for people who really have a hard time finding the information that they're looking for about the accuracies and inaccuracies, um, or, or people who just have few things to talk about. Your movie is so close to what actually happened that you don't have that, that many things to say about the differences. Um, and believe me, I've, I've done this for many years, and so I know a lot, you know, it, most students do the same batch of movies in every class. So I've probably seen papers before on whatever the movie is that you're doing, and I'm likely to have seen it myself and to have looked at this, this you know, accuracies and inaccuracies myself. So don't think that you can fool me <laughs> because I'm going to read it and if you're just stopping because you don't want to write anymore, I'm going to be like, yeah, you didn't write as much as you could. So if you're concerned at all about the length, the length, um, aim closer to four pages. Four pages is definitely going to be writing enough. More than five is writing too much. You're, you're doing too much analysis of the fact, facts versus fiction. Um, so if you're not sure, try and aim right for the middle. Four pages, it's hard to go wrong with a four page paper for this assignment. Um, but again, if you're, if you're struggling, if you're not sure, uh, whether you've written enough or whether you've written too much, you can always come talk to me about it. Make sure your paper is stapled as well. Suggested outline. You're not absolutely required to follow this, but this is a good helpful thing for you to know as you're taking all this information and putting it into your paper. So first of all, an introduction that's going to summarize the plot of the movie or TV show and also give your thesis. This is or this is not a historically, a historically accurate movie. Talk about the historical accuracies and inaccuracies, and you can switch those around if you wanna do inaccuracies first and then accuracies. This, these two are totally interchangeable. And notice I've put one to three paragraphs here because it depends on your movie. Some of you will have lots of accuracies and few inaccuracies. Some of you will have lots of inaccuracies and few accuracies. Some of you will be right in the middle and have about equal. So one to three paragraphs for each. If you go a little over that, that's okay. Um, but, but one to three for each is a good guideline. And again, if you're not sure how much to write, go straight for the middle. Two paragraphs for each one would work. Opinions on the movie's portrayal of history. And so that's going to be your opinion, but also discussing those three required topics, you know, that making sure that you've answered those three questions that we went over on the earlier slide. And then a conclusion that sums up your points and rephrases your thesis. Is this a good historical movie or not? Always go back to those sample essays. So the student sample essay is a great one to follow as far as the, the organization of the paper, the things that it talks about, the use of quotes, the works cited, all of those things 
are going to be helpful models for you to use. Also, the other readings that we've had during, um, during this month talking about the rewriting history paper, uh, the one on Malcolm X, judging cinematic history, rewriting history. So again, in addition to me giving you these readings because they make you a better re uh, writer, I'm also giving them to you because they help you figure out how to say the things that you're supposed to say in this paper and how to analyze things. And so this is where having read those papers is going to give you an edge as you're writing your paper. Having not read them is going to bite you in the ass. So um, I hope that you read them, but if you didn't, your paper's probably going to suffer for it a little bit. So here's your writing assignment. So first of all, I want you to go back to your rhetorical analysis essay, your first essay in this class, and I want you to think about what you did wrong on that paper. Now this might be before you even started writing the paper. Maybe you were not good with time management and you were writing it, you know, at two o'clock in the morning the night before it was due and didn't give yourself enough time. Um, maybe you didn't proofread it enough. I, I'm always horrified when students say they type and type and type, they hit the minimum page length requirement, and then they hit print on their printer. You're supposed to go back and look over it and catch mistakes. Um, writing is a process. It's not uh, something that happens within one hour before the paper is due. It's something that's supposed to take place over days or even weeks. So you're doing it wrong if you're not uh, giving yourself time to think about the information and write it out carefully and go back and look over your own paper. Um, maybe you didn't take peer review seriously enough. That's another problem you could have made. Uh, you can also obviously look at the, the actual errors on your paper, the things that I circled and underlined and things I wrote in the margin and things I wrote on the final, um, like next to your final grade to show you why you got a certain grade. So think about that as well. Now, if you made an A on your paper and you didn't have any problems, then you can tell me what did you do right that, uh, that made you get such a high grade on the paper. So this is a little bit of, of both. Reflect on mistakes that you made uh, and then take that and tell me what are you going to do differently with the rewriting history essay to make sure you don't make the same mistakes. Or if you were really happy with your grade and you didn't have any problems, what are you going to do the same? What did you do that worked for you with that first essay and you're going to make sure to do it again with this essay? And this, this is not a ton of writing, you know, two to four sentences will be enough on this as long as they're very specific. So this is not about how much are you going to write about uh, this question. It's about being as specific as possible about what did you do wrong, what did you do right, what are you gonna do for the next paper to make sure you get the grade that you want. Number two, make a correctly formatted works cited entry for the text you're analyzing in this essay. So that's your movie or TV show. Um, and if you're handwriting this, make sure that you're underlining things that are going to be italicized, make sure that you're showing that indentation, um, that you're using all the punctuation correctly, because I will take off points if you're not doing that. And then finally, include a quote from your text or another source you're using in the correct quote sandwich format. So from any of your texts, um, show me the quote that you're going to use from it. So quote sandwich again means introduction uh, of where it came from and you know is it from your movie, is it from uh, a particular source that you're going to give me the author's name and their credentials. So that's the first piece of bread. The meat or peanut butter and jelly is the quote itself and don't forget to include page numbers if you've used a printed source. And then that last piece of bread is, what is this quote doing in your paper? What do you have to say about it? How does it prove something that you're trying to talk about in your paper? Or how does it show an accuracy or an inaccuracy? So um, put that on, on this writing assignment as well. And I'm going to try and look at these and um, just get a general idea of what kind of mistakes are people making on the works cited and in the quotes 
and, and do a little review of that so that we learn from our mistakes. And also make sure you're going back to your rhetorical analysis essay and understanding why you made the mistakes that you made and not repeating those mistakes in this paper. All right, so this can be handwritten or typed and you'll turn it into me in the next class period. Email me if you have any questions and I will see you in class.